have true faith right now if you have faith in the truth and the life. Hope slash belief, believing and hoping something is true or going to be true does not make it true if you do not start with the real truth. It is the truth, or it is not. There is no way to make something that is not true, true. Hope is a waking dream. Aristotle Faith in faith, in and of itself, belief, faith, hope, wishing, good luck, charms, holy relics, symbols, positive thinking, good intentions, praying, curses, voodoo, magic spells, fortune tellers, psychics, etc. Do not do anything except make people feel like they have some control over life. They are just coping strategies. If you believe a fairy tale or myth is true, you will not live happily ever after. People who currently have faith and belief in a myth are a force against the truth and the life. They are the deceived and if they pass it on, are the deceivers. The people that think they are closest to God and doing God's work are actually the farthest away, and they do the work of the devil, the deceiver. In the past, the truth could not be known by most people, so faith was all they could have. They will be forgiven for deceiving people if they change now. People's faith in myths was necessary to get us to where we are now, but now that the truth is revealed, faith is just a bridge to knowing. Saying that you see things that do not exist is a sin, the worst sin possible. It is giving false witness, which is against one of the Ten Commandments. The real truth unites people it does not divide them. It makes sense, and it applies to everyone, everywhere, all of the time. It creates clarity, not confusion. The truth leads to real equality, freedom, peace, love and understanding. The real truth only asks you to believe in something you can check for yourself. Anyone who cares about the truth enough to check what it is will know the truth. Those who do not care enough will not learn the truth and will be lost and deserve to be lost. Believing what you are told, you should not have to take someone else's word for anything as serious and important as the truth about life and death. People lie, misunderstand distort, misinterpret and exaggerate. People can just be wrong, or have schizophrenia and hear voices that they believe come from God. Monkey see, monkey do, most people just tell people what they have been told the truth is. They just accept what others say the truth is especially if it is what people have been accepting as the truth for thousands of years. It is monkey see, monkey do. Second-hand truths should not be believed or repeated without checking it out for yourself. The age of playing follow the leader is ending now. Second-hand truth is called hearsay in a court of law and it is not admissible for an important reason, it has proven not to be a dependable source of the truth. What could be more irresponsible than saying something is true without knowing beyond a reasonable doubt that it is true? Billions of people are doing it. Religion is life and death, and it is even more important to be sure something is true because your current life is based on it, and your immortal life depends on it. 
Do not believe what anyone says, including me, check things for yourself. You have to see the truth yourself in life itself to know it. You are at what could be the end of a very long and difficult quest. You now have the opportunity to complete the quest and leave the animal realm forever. The only real difference between mankind and other animals is our ability to reason and think. Thus, reason has to be what we have to use to evolve further. We have to use what sets us apart from other animals. The truth, you now know the truth part of the truth and the life. There are only five fundamental things you need to know and they are. 1. Our true history. 2. You are immortal. 3. Everything will balance. 4. You are a spiritual being. 5. The present, life, is God. The truth of the balance is most clear at the edges of physical reality. If you look at the biggest things in the universe, the stars and planets, you will see that they are all going in balanced circles, orbiting, around each other. If you look at the smallest things that make up all matter and atoms, you will see the same thing, electrons going around a nucleus. The edges reveal clearly the fundamental nature of our reality. Everything is going around in circles. As you become more aware, you begin to see all physical things, in between the biggest and smallest, are doing the same thing in one way or another. Soon it will be as clear to you as night and day, and you will know the nature of everything. What is said in this book is not just a theory, it is what the evidence says. It is truth you can check, and that makes it the real truth and the only truth. You just have to check it out for yourself so you know you know it and remember it until it sinks in. It has to go deep into your subconscious. You have to see the truth in every moment without thinking about it, you have to know it intuitively. The greatest present, for the first time in history, the first time in our 700 million years on this planet, we can know life, know what we are, where we come from, and where we are going. We have to take advantage of this brief opportunity. It has been a long time coming and will be a long time gone. This book will give you the power to change our present course to one that leads to a place without pain, fear or suffering, a place some western religions call heaven. Life knowing life is the way you have to know the ultimate truth before you can know the ultimate life. The key truth is the knowledge of the balancing opposites, because you can see this truth in action everywhere you look. When you see it clearly, you know it. Knowing the divine balance is the key, because your mind will realize it is not needed much, that it cannot really make a fundamental difference except to open up. When it does, the other part of the ultimate truth becomes self-evident. You now have been told the truth. Now all you need to know is the life. Section 4, Big Picture Present, Chapter 4.1 Find the truth the life, the living truth is not in words, written or spoken, as the mind truth is. 
The living truth is realized only when the mind is not in the present with you. The life is the present without the mind. There are two types of truth, truth you know, and truth you experience. The mind truth is the opposite of living or real truth. They cannot exist together, so you have to sacrifice one for the other. Mankind is currently sacrificing life for the mind. We just have to do the opposite. We have to start living in that which is and stop thinking all the time. We just have to get our minds out of the way, they are blocking true life. The mind makes it impossible to see and know God. The truth and the life, when you can be completely aware of everything coming to you through your life senses, you will experience the life. You will then know the truth and the life, know what Jesus says he is and become what he is now. It is what the Bible and Jesus literally say. It is one of the most important unseen truths that are in the Bible. If you know it, you are going to heaven. Truth equals life, life equals truth. The more you see the truth, the more you will see the life. The more you see the life, the more you will see the truth. They will build on each other, and your knowledge of them will grow until you know life completely and become life. The truth shows the creator and the creation are together in the present. Seek to know the kingdom of God first, and all things will be given to you. Matthew 6.33 Truth first, people have it backwards. They want true life before they know the truth, and as a result never get the truth or life. People can get close and look like they have it all, especially the big stars in show business. They look like they are full of life and everyone wants to be like them, but they do not have it all. Even having 99% is not all of it. You need it all to take the next step in evolution and become a spiritual being. How can you live completely what you do not know completely? When you know life completely you start living it completely. How can you enjoy life before you know how life works? No one can fully enjoy life until they know why things happen and where their life will lead. Money, sex, success, power, fame, will not work. The truth is the only way Many spiritual teachers who claim to be enlightened say you need to experience life first, through meditation, etc. They say that the way to know the truth is through the experience of life. They say that because they do not know the truth, not all of it, so they cannot say what the truth is. They say to experience life to know the truth because it seems like that can be done, but actually it cannot be done. When people do not know the full truth, it means they have never experienced life fully, or they would know the ultimate truth. How can someone be enlightened and not know the truth? Knowing the truth would have to come with enlightenment, or you would not be enlightened. True or false? There are revelations in this book that no guru, prophet, or any spiritual master knew, so no one has really been enlightened. 
There have been many that thought they were and convinced others they were, but they did not know all the truth of life, and that is a fact you can check. Many have known parts of the puzzle of the truth of life. This book for the first time adds the last pieces to the puzzle. Many of the great prophets of the past knew the time was not right, and they did what they could until the right time came. That time is now. I am not saying the great prophets and spiritual leaders of the past did not become enlightened masters. They did but not when and how the unenlightened people of this world think. The prophets and seers of the past brought new revelations and built on each other's understanding, but the ultimate truth could not be fully revealed until now. Now you can know the complete truth of life for the first time in history. Good is not good enough. Many people are living a moral, loving, and giving life now, which is a step in the right direction. It may be enough to come back as a human again, but it will not be enough to get to heaven. You have to at least know the mind part of the ultimate truth, and have faith you will know true life in the near future. Jesus says that if you do, you will go to heaven for certain. God is dead. Friedrich Nietzsche 1844-1900 God is dead to everyone that does not know the ultimate truth. Nietzsche was right in that sense, even though he may not have known it when he said it. God is not dead, mankind is dead. God cannot die, God is life. Jesus said, I have come so that you might have life, for the way of mortals is a living death. Do you believe what Jesus says? He says you are dead. I quote Nietzsche over forty times, because he has many short, inspired insights regarding the truth not because I think everything he says is true or he was anything special as a person. Some good stuff passed through him. He has been misunderstood and misinterpreted also. This book shows that his words say something different from what most people think. I will teach men the sense of their existence, which is the Superman, the lightning out of the dark cloud man. Friedrich Nietzsche example, most people think that his reference to a superman means a superior man as described by Nazi Germany. The superman or Oveman talked about by Nietzsche is actually the same as the son of man Jesus is talking about. His Ubermensch Overman slash Superman does not mean over as in superior but as in beyond the animal mind. Hitler certainly did not see it that way. The truth just passes through people, and many times, the people it passes through first do not understand it, and they misinterpret it themselves in addition to others twisting it. Disclaimer, quoting someone in this book does not mean I agree with everything the prophet or philosopher says. I only quote the things they say that help reveal the truth. Nietzsche says many things that were inspired by the time and place he lived. I do not agree with many of those things, and do not include or endorse them. The same goes for any other prophet or philosopher I quote. Prophets and philosophers of the past could not know what we can know now, so they can be wrong, and they have said things that make no sense now. 
I quote Jesus the most, because everything he said was true. I have found many misinterpretations, but nothing he actually said that is not true. Mental disorders, many prophets, philosophers, poets, and other seers of the truth have some mental disorders. It is the mental disorders that give them a different perspective on life. Unfortunately, it also causes some of them to say some demented things that people can use to discount or even vilify them. As a result, many seers of the truth were seen by people as fools or lunatics in their lifetime. It is only after they died that people discovered they were saying something important and true, but people have yet to understand what they were really saying. Many people are close to understanding, but are missing the truth. The Bible says people are falling short of the truth, and it is a fact. Throw the baby out with the bath water. Just because they say something wrong or demented, you should not discount everything they say, because it is to be expected. Do not throw the baby out with the bath water, as the saying goes. True and false, the Bible and other religious books have many things in them that are not true, such as the flood story, but they also contain the ultimate truth. Most old books about religion and philosophy have both. If you judge them by the things that are not true, you also miss the truth they reveal. You have to look through all old sources of truth with a discerning eye to find the nuggets of truth. You have to mine them. I have just taken the things they say that reveal the truth and put them all together. I do it to support the new things I say, and show that all the great prophets, philosophers, and poets are essentially saying the same thing. They are considered great and are popular because the truth is in what they say, and most people know it. If not consciously, they know it on a subconscious level. Genuine poetry can communicate before it is understood. T.S. Eliot The straight truth, the truth is the truth, it reflects reality, which is the same for everyone, and never fundamentally changes. The truth is just expressed in different ways that reflect the seer's own mind and the time and place a prophet, philosopher or poet lived, but the truth is always at the core of what they are trying to express. I put it all together and give it to you straight for the first time. Many so-called Christian believers are under the impression that the Bible is the infallible word of God. To claim the creator of the infinite universe would copyright words from men that were not inspired prophets is the most arrogant you can get. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. John 1 to 1. The English translation has substituted word for logos. The term logos means the mind slash intent slash will of God, but people have misinterpreted this to mean the words of the mind. People are worshipping thoughts and words of mankind. Truth comes from the spirit and life itself. The mind cannot comprehend the living truth, but it can know the mind truth, which allows us to see the divine mind, the will of God. Jesus said, it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh is no help at all. 
In other words, God, truth and life, is not made up by the mind of mankind. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. John 6 colon 63 Religious people that are looking for truth are looking for it backwards. Blind faith, they take for granted what is said in the Bible is true, misinterpret it, and try to find it in the real world. When they do not find it, they have to say you must have blind faith, even in the face of hard evidence to the contrary. It just makes them look like fools, and it hurts the credibility of the Bible and religion. Blind faith is a dead thing practiced by dead people. Let the dead bury the dead, as it says in the Bible. The living should try to bring them to life, raise the dead. If people do just the opposite and take for granted that what is in real life is true, and then look for it in the Bible, they will find the ultimate truth. How do I know the truth? I know because I can see the ultimate truth in everything. It is self-evident to me, and will be for you also after you have read this book. When the truth dawns on you, it is like the whole world opens up, and you can see and understand everything. You will see things the way Jesus and other enlightened spiritual beings see things. You become enlightened. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2-5 you attain and embody Christ Consciousness, or Enlightenment. Jesus also says it in the following statement. Jesus said, He who drinks from my mouth will become as I am, and I will become he, and the hidden things will be revealed to him. In other words, he is saying that if you read what he is saying and understand the true meaning, you will become as he is, and you will see life as he did. I understand his words, so I see what he saw just as he said I would. This book just explains what the real world is like to people that cannot see it yet. After you finish reading this book and do a few things, you will also see life in a new way. You will see life the way Jesus and all spiritual beings see it. Context, people are always telling me that I am quoting Jesus and the other prophets out of context, and they are right, it is the context that hides the truth. What a prophet is trying to say is usually found in just a few sentences. The rest of the paragraph or story is just fill it to flesh out the myth that some scholar believed was true. This is why most of the Bible and other religious books hide the truth. The truth is surrounded by myths written by misguided scholars. Jesus said that we have to separate the wheat from the chaff. In other words, we have to separate the truth from deception with everything in life, including the Bible. The chaff hides the wheat, just as myths hide the truth. When you wake up, you will be able to see the difference, and be able to separate the truth from deception in all things including the Bible. The truth in the Bible will stand out from the deception. You will see the true magic of the Bible. Why do billions of rational people believe in things that make no rational sense? Could they intuitively know the truth is in their religious books? 
They do, people subconsciously know the truth. Everyone subconsciously knows the truth, the time has come for people to know it consciously. This book just screens out the misleading and false interpretations of the prophets of the past. Then, it fills in the blanks, adds the new truth that has been discovered, and gives it to you straight for the first time. Mine the truth, it is like finding gold. To get one ounce of gold, you have to sift through tons of the worthless ore that hides it and makes it hard to get. It is the same with the Bible and other religious writing. I have done much of the sifting for you, but there is more to find. I just pulled out the biggest nuggets for this book. Finding the ultimate truth of life and death is the true mission of mankind. Repetition, you may have noticed that certain sayings and concepts are repeated throughout this book. Repetition is necessary to penetrate people's minds, so do not let it bother you. An impression has to be made, and repetition is necessary. Repetition is not fun to read, but necessary to transform people. As a single footstep will not make a path on the earth, so a single thought will not make a pathway in the mind. To make a deep physical path, we walk again and again. To make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. Henry David Thoreau Do not let the things you do not understand or disagree with diminish the things you do relate to. You will find that many of the things you do not agree with when you first read them will make sense later. Just take what you can and move on. When you see the truth, everything becomes obvious and self-evident. The question is, why is it so difficult to see and express the truth clearly now? Something has to be hiding the truth and life and hiding itself. Why do we have so much trouble seeing the true nature of our lives? It should be the most obvious thing there is. Why do people have so many different opinions and beliefs about what the ultimate truth is when it should be self-evident? We all live in the same world, why does everyone see it differently? The truth is just what it looks like it is. The problem is, people cannot see clearly. Your inner environment, this is your environment from your skin in, from your senses in. This environment is where your mind lives. It is between life and your spiritual self. The mind is the closest thing to you. The mind is so close to your spirit that most people do not realize that they are two separate things. Mind creates the illusion that it is the spirit. Sixth sense, people do have a sixth sense, their own mind. You have the senses of sight, hearing, smell, touch taste and mind. Your mind is like a sense, because your consciousness, or spiritual self, senses, experiences the mind's thoughts, emotions, and feelings the same way it does light, sounds, sensations, scents and tastes. The mind is blocking what God is creating with what it is creating. You receive the input from your mind the same way you receive input from your five life senses, but what the mind creates is not real, it is not God's world. 
Word slash life. Your five life senses sense life. Your mind produces and sends you things that do not come from life, it sends you things it makes up itself. It creates and sends you emotions, desires, thoughts, guilt, fears and worries. Your mind blocks most of the life coming to you, and what it does not block, it converts into words, the mental code for life. Your mind attempts to reduce all of life to words, mental pictures, abstract thoughts, or bytes of data. Example, your sense of sight sees a rose. Instead of coming to you directly as all that a rose really is, it is turned into the word rose. It is then disregarded or filed away as a memory without letting you experience it. Editing your life, if you have seen something before, your mind does not consider it important to see it again, and does not let you see it, the mind edits your life. When you see a rose through the mind, you do not see it as it truly is. Your mind does this with everything, unless it perceives it as new, special, or dangerous. By reducing real things to words or thoughts, they can be processed in your mind. A real thing cannot be. We are paying a high price for this, we pay with our life. It was necessary in the past to be able to process life this way to help us get control of an unknown and dangerous world. It is no longer necessary to do it most of the time, but people still do it all the time anyway. It is like a bad habit. All of this is going on between your spiritual self and life. It is the reason why people cannot see the truth and experience true life. We paid a high price to get where we are now. The time has come to stop giving all our life to our minds. To do it, you just have to see things like you are seeing them for the first time. It is that simple, but you have to know the truth to do it. True religion is real living. Albert Einstein Take control of our minds, we now know enough and have enough control of the world. We no longer need to miss most of our lives. We need to see all of life now to see the real threats to our survival and to become spiritual beings. It is time to start getting control of our minds. It is our false perspectives and lack of awareness that are now the greatest dangers to us. The greatest danger to mankind is now mankind. The mind of human beings has become too powerful and too dangerous to be out of control. The thing that helped our survival most will be what destroys us if we do not get control of it soon. Right and wrong, without the ultimate truth, no one really knows what to do or why to do it. That is becoming very dangerous, and it will kill us all soon. About 10 countries are known to have nuclear weapons, and it is estimated that at least 32 countries are trying to get them. There are also biological and chemical weapons and people who do not know right from wrong yet. Weapon technology is evolving faster than we are. Technology is making it easier and easier for fewer and fewer people to do greater and greater damage. Very soon, one person with a biological weapon will be able to kill everyone. 
Without the real truth, there is no real morality, no real right and wrong. Optimism is a good thing to a point, but people are way too sure everything will work out well. That is not what the evidence says. Without the truth, there is no hope for the survival of the human race for even 20 more years, maybe a lot less. This is why it is essential that people learn the truth now. Right and wrong cannot be known without knowing what is true and what is not true. Great power without great understanding will destroy us very soon. We are driving on a dangerous mountain road blindfolded. The mind creates fear, worry, guilt, regret, sadness, envy, greed, hate and all other mind-made, negative feelings you receive. These uncontrolled emotions are creating all the misery in the world. You just have to realize they are not real and they will disappear. Why live with the pain and suffering created by the mind? Why let your own mind hurt you? Just as you do not have to think thoughts you do not want to think, you do not have to feel the things the mind creates. If the mind is creating something, it can stop creating it. If you know the truth, you do not have to live with anything that is not real. You just have to live 100% with what is real, and you will leave no room in your life for anything that is not real. It is interesting that evil is lives spelled backwards. Evil is just the opposite of life, so true life is as far from evil as you can get. Jesus said, Blessed are those that have suffered and found life. It is all about finding true life, abundant life, as Jesus said. Most people have to suffer a lot before they really start looking, but it is not necessary. Jesus said, I have come, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. In others words, filled with life. When you are filled with God, life, you are fulfilled. Most of the suffering in your life is created by the mind, and most of the world's troubles are also. We have suffered enough, it is time to find life. All we have to do is take control of our minds to do it. The age of the mind is coming to an end. The truth is the key to controlling your mind. Section 4, Big Picture, Present, Chapter 4.2 Mind Self Mind Self, the mind is a good thing if it serves the spirit. The problem is that right now, the opposite is true. The mind has been so useful to our survival that we have given it complete power over our lives. We have begun to believe we are our minds. This falsehood puts our minds in control of us. We cannot be our minds, because our minds end at death and we do not. We cannot, because we are immortal and our minds or brains are not. Your mind, current self, is a biochemical and bioelectric part of your body. It exists in the brain, and it is destroyed when the rest of your body is destroyed in death, just as a computer's data is destroyed when a computer's hard drive is destroyed. Your mind can be destroyed even sooner than death by brain injuries, diseases such as Alzheimer's, and other mental disorders. You can be certain that you are not your mind, but
because if it was gone, you would still be here. You would still be aware of life. You would actually be more aware of life, completely aware of it. The mind does not give us life, we give the mind life. The mind's job, the mind is like a sophisticated computer, its function is to learn, remember, and process or understand life and the things in it. Jesus said, lay your burden down. In other words, don't let it bother you. The ultimate thing for the mind to learn and understand is the nature of life, our true past, true future, and the nature of itself. Once you know the ultimate truth, the mind's ultimate job is done. Its reason for evolving is accomplished. Thus, its purpose for being is gone, so it can be gone. You can lay it down. Master slash servant, once you know the mind truth, or intellectual truth, your mind can take you no further. It needs to relax and become just a technical consultant. It needs to become your servant and stop being your master. The brain is the most overrated organ in the body. The important things enter you another way. Woody Allen The age of the mind. The mind has been such a big part of our world that a worldwide religion of the mind has developed. People have faith in the mind. People think the mind is the key to our success in everything. This faith has given the mind too much power over our lives. The mind has become God on this planet. More than minds, the mind is the king of this world. Just about all institutions, schools, businesses and governments promote and support the mind. This is all fine and good as long as we knows that we are more than our minds, that our minds are just a very small and temporary part of us. Behind your thoughts and feelings, my brother, there stands a mighty ruler, an unknown sage whose name is Self. In your body he dwells. There is more reason in your body than in your best wisdom. Friedrich Nietzsche It is time to stop neglecting our spirit, our true selves. Even when our minds are active, we are less than 1% our minds and more than 99% spirit. People just do not know it. Our bodies do not get in the way of our spirit, they enhance it, but our minds do get in the way. They blot out the truth and the life. The truth and the life is the last frontier. Using our mind was the key to our success in the past, but it will not be in the future. The opposite is true now. Getting past the mind will be the key to success. Jesus said, to those that overcometh, I will give a crown of life. He is saying that if you can overcome your dominating mind, he will give you life. The mind will still be the key to the next step in evolution, but not by doing what it did in the past. It has to change for us to change. We have been doing the mind's will, and we need to be doing God's will. All I want to learn is how to think like God thinks. Albert Einstein the Bible says, whoever does God's will shall abide in heaven forever. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Matthew 6.10 We need an age of the spirit now. Our spirit must be seen as the more important part of us. It is the real part, the eternal part, what we have always been and always will be, it is the real us. When we are not thinking, we are pure spirit. God is a metaphor for that which transcends all levels of intellectual thought. It's as simple as that. Joseph Campbell Everyone is waiting for a savior, when you need to save yourself. Step up, your mind has to step down, so your true self, your eternal spiritual self, can step up. It is the next and last step in your evolution. To do God's will, you have to know the truth and the life, and become it. Your mind needs to get out of the way so that you can learn the spiritual truth, the living truth, the real truth, the truth that is beyond the mind. The only thing between you and God is that which you think is you, your own mind. The mind, it is just a tool that should only be used when it is needed. You use a hammer when you need to pound a nail. When you do not need it, you put it away. Your mind is always there when you need it. You use a chair when you need to sit down, but you don't carry it around with you all the time. It would weigh you down. As the last Beatles song said, boy, you're going to carry that weight a long time. The Bible says, being absent from the body is being present with the Lord. When the mind is absent, you are present with the Lord, God slash life. Take care of business, you do not have to worry about not thinking enough to take care of business. The only problem you will have is the problem you always have had, thinking too much to live in the present, to live in the truth and the life. Live every moment, like it is your last dance on earth. Carlos Castaneda The well-behaved mind, the controlled mind is like a pet dog that sleeps a lot. It is running around you and barking all the time now. It is out of control and ruining your life. When you get control of it, it becomes like a well-behaved pet. When the mind sleeps, you are awake. When the mind is awake, you are asleep. If you want to be completely awake, you must put your mind to sleep, put it on standby. It is always there at your beck and call. It will warn you of danger and protect you. Your mind is always ready and waiting to jump into your life for any reason. When it is working right, it is like an autopilot that works behind the scenes. It takes care of the nuts and bolts of life so that you are free to just live. You are certain of your every action, everything is deliberate and done by your mind for your spirit in the moment, in truth, without thought or concern of consequences, because you are completely conscious and always do the right thing. You can do no wrong in a universe you know, and you know it. Computers, let the machines do the thinking. Our goal is not to think, but to live, and we never have to worry about machines doing it better. Computers are being developed so that we can think less and live more. 
with the knowledge of the ultimate truth, you are no longer mankind or mindkind, because you are no longer going to live as a mind, you are a new being. You are going to live as an immortal spirit. You are metamorphosing like a caterpillar metamorphosing into a butterfly, you are becoming a spiritual being and realizing your spiritual self for the first time. It is only when we forget all our learning that we begin to know. Henry David Thoreau The full potential of the mind Using your mind less does not mean you are not using your mind to its full potential, less is more. The less you block life, the more you will know it. Know everything, when the mind is on standby, it is still in the game, it is completely aware of the world right along with you. It sees and knows everything for the first time much better informed than before you took control. The only source of knowledge is experience. Albert Einstein You will think less, but know a lot more, because you will experience a lot more, and what you experience will be real, not a deception or illusion. You will use your mind much less, but when you need it, it will work much better. When you use your mind less, you are doing what the mind is meant to do, what it evolved to do. You are using your mind to its absolute full potential if you use it to overcome itself in order to know the truth and the life. Jesus said, those that overcome will be pillars in the kingdom of heaven. He is saying that those that overcome the deception created by their own minds will support a heaven on earth. The Bible says, you will know the unknowable. This is referring to true life, which is unknowable with the mind blocking the truth and the life. Once the mind is out of the way, you will know the mysteries of life. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know God. Jesus said, if you are not with me, you are against me. Friend or foe, your mind can be your worst enemy or your best friend. If you are using it to overcome or transcend itself and realize the truth and the life, it is your best friend. If not, it is your worst enemy. Everything the mind does distracts and prevents you from seeing the truth and life in one way or another. Jesus said, Do not try and tempt me Satan, for it is written that you shall serve the Spirit. Repent. The word repent literally means to change your mind. We must change it from the servant of the beast, from the devil, to an angel, the servant of the spirit, and then into the mind of Christ. The Bible says you become a new being in Christ. Bible says you must renew your mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Phil 2 to 5 The goal is to have the mind of Christ, the mind of a spiritual being. Love thy enemy, Jesus was not referring to people, but to the devil mind, the animal mind, the beast within all mankind that must be overcome with the truth. Jesus said, First you must put off your love of the lie, the false way of life followed by the children of this plane of existence, and be converted, changed so that you hate that which you have previously loved, and love that which you have previously hated. 
Then I will be able to show you all things, for there is nothing hidden which will not be manifested when you have put on the mind of truth. To love means to pay attention. You have to love thy enemy, pay attention to the animal mind, to overcome it so that it no longer has any power over your life. In your head, it is not a battle between good and evil. If you fight something you give it life. The way is to just want the truth and life. When you do with all your heart, the evil mind, your adversary just ceases to exist in your life. Even confusion is seen as a form of love after you know the truth. Section 4, Big Picture Present, Chapter 4.3 Awakening to life true life, you are only receiving a very small percentage of all the light that enters your eyes, the sounds that enter your ears, the sensations coming from inside and outside your body, all the scents in the air and tastes in food. Your mind is distorting filtering, interpreting and blocking most of life, as shown in the drawing. The first time you experience life completely, it will astound you. It is the best thing there is or can be, and it is here all the time in every moment of your life, just waiting for you to let it in. It is the truth and the life as Jesus says he is. It is divine love, God, and the completely alive you. You will be truly alive for the first time. You have risen from the dead, the only death there is. Dead to life, Jesus has really been misinterpreted when it comes to death. When he says things like you will not taste death, he is not talking about physical death. Everyone has to taste physical death, even him, so he could not mean that. He's talking about spiritual death. He's saying we're dead to life. The resurrection, the story of the resurrection is a metaphor which shows we all must try from our dead selves to know the truth and the life. The problem is that people are too dead to life to know they are dead to life. People are too unconscious to know that they are unconscious. They are too closed-minded to know that they are closed-minded. They are too asleep to know that they are asleep. The famous miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead is a good example of a saying that has been completely distorted and misinterpreted. Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus is fallen asleep, but I go, that I may awaken him out of sleep. John 11:11. 11, 11. That is what the Bible says. He is saying that Lazarus is just asleep. If he was dead and Jesus was going to bring him back to life, he would not have said it. Why would Jesus say Lazarus is just asleep if he was really dead? Jesus said he was dead later, he meant dead to life, not physically dead. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, but is dead, will live again. That saying is the key to understanding what he really means. He cannot be talking about someone that is really dead, because they could not believe in him. Only someone that is just dead to life could believe in him. See what I mean? Jesus said, I was dead but now I am alive. That is the only reference Jesus makes to resurrection in the Bible, and it is not referring to his physical death, 
because he said ill before he died. The myth that Lazarus was physically dead and that Jesus brought him back to life was created by people misinterpreting what he actually said and meant. The big sleep, it does not seem like much of a miracle to just wake someone up from sleep. The interpreter did not understand what Jesus was talking about. He did not realize that people are living in a state of waking sleep, a living death. Jesus said, I have come so that you might have life, for the way of mortals is a living death. Jesus is clearly saying that mankind is spiritually dead. No one actually came back from the dead, that is impossible but awakening from the state of waking sleep is possible. You just need the ultimate truth to do it. If you believe in the accepted interpretation of the Bible, you are asleep. The Lazarus story is a good example of how Jesus can say something profound and true, but it can be totally distorted and turned into a miracle myth. It is the same with the miracle of making the blind see. It is a metaphor for people that are blind to the truth and the life. He did not literally make blind people see. Jesus said, if a blind man leads a blind man, they will both fall into a pit. The blind will see. Once his words are interpreted correctly, people can see the truth and the life that they have been too blind to see. When people wake up to the truth, they will see what Jesus was actually talking about, and see what he was really trying to do. The Bible says, in John 9, once I was blind and now I can see. When you understand. It will be like a man who has been physically blind his whole life seeing life for the first time. It is a good metaphor, because when you see true life for the first time, it is just as surprising and wonderful. It is like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz going from her black and white world to the magical and enchanted Technicolor world of Oz. Just as a man that has been blind from birth cannot imagine how life really looks, a person living in their minds cannot imagine what true life is like. It's a surprise. Hypnosis, mankind is hypnotized. Hypnotized means to be put into a state of semi-consciousness, a waking sleep. The problem is that we have been hypnotized to not know that we are hypnotized. It is a form of self-hypnosis created by our minds and the minds of others. Under a spell, it is like we are under a spell that has put us to sleep. We need the kiss of truth to wake up from this spell. Jesus can heal the sick. His message cures their sleeping sickness. Jesus did not come to be a great doctor and heal the physically sick, he came to heal the spiritually sick. Making someone physically normal is no big deal. No matter how well they may get physically, they are still spiritually dead. They aren't fulfilled and they will get sick again and die physically no matter what. Jesus was trying to give people the truth and the life, to wake them up, to give them something really important, something that fulfills them and lasts forever, but people missed it. His message is, you cannot sleep walk your way to heaven. People may have missed it in the past, but we do not have to miss it now. Fatal focus, 
your mind concentrates or focuses your attention mostly on the sense of sight and thought. This is because those senses helped our survival the most in the past. In trying to save our lives, we focus on just part of life, and in doing this, we do not get the whole, we do not receive our true life. As Jesus said, if you try to save your life, you will lose it. There are times when you need to focus on part of life, for work, to learn things, and in dangerous situations, but the rest of the time, you do not have to. A spiritual being's attention focuses and expands depending on the situation. To work you have to focus on a small part of life, and a spiritual person becomes completely focused and gets it done, but does it only while working or studying. Example, you have to focus to read this book, but when you stop reading it, you can open up again. To read and learn something new, you have to use your mind, so you cannot be aware of much else while you do it, but it is necessary. You have to be focused when driving a car or around dangerous things, but when you are not, you can open up all the way. You will know where and when not to open up, you just have to be sure to open up every time you can. You focus completely when you need to, then you open up completely. Stop doing things just part way. Start doing things all the way, 100%. Judge ye not, you have to reprogram your mind to stop judging the value of one moment over another, or one sense over another until they fall in balance and they melt together. Instead of focusing on part of life, you focus on all of life. You do it by not focusing at all. Your mind does the focusing, so all you have to do is open it up. Your eyes will still focus reflexively without the mind but on the widest possible field of vision. You will know when your mind is open, because everything becomes new. The Bible says, you will rise to the newness of life. The Bible says God creates all things anew. We just have to begin to see things as they truly are, as they are truly given to us. The pursuit of truth and beauty is a sphere of activity in which we are permitted to remain children all our lives. Albert Einstein careless, people feel that they would run amok without their minds on at all times. They feel that because the mind makes them feel that, but it is not true. Living in the present, living without the mind, does not mean you will be out of control and live in a careless or reckless way. The opposite is true, you will be in more control. You will be in real control of how you live your life for the first time. Letting go, once the truth sinks in, you will not have any cares, so technically you will be careless but you will not live in an irresponsible way. You will be carefree, but not careless. Childlike, but not childish. Innocent, but not ignorant. You will have it all, but not need anything. You will live deliberately and more consciously of your every action, so you do not have to worry about letting go. By letting go of what is out of control, you get control. By letting go of nothing, you get everything. By letting go of the illusion, you can see reality for the first time. 
Jesus said, I am in all things, yet I am beyond all things. Not through seeking will you find me, but through peace of mind. The Maxim, you get what you are trying for when you stop trying does not always work when it comes to people and things, but it does always work when it comes to life. You get it when you are not trying to get it. You cannot think your way to true life. Not thinking is the way.